everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy, the Riot Wave. So I've actually been kind of excited about this guy ever since I heard about it, because Riot is an interesting knife company. They've been doing a lot of interesting things. Chinese company, David Deng. Um, and they they make knives that with incredible action and good good fit and finish materials, whatnot, but by and large, what they've made has been huge. And I don't love huge knives generally. So uh, when they said that they were going to make a smaller knife with Rayot quality, oh man, this was pretty exciting to me. And so I'm really grateful to my buddy Mike, and actually I handled one of these guys at Blade HQ, and that even more made me think, oh god, I need to handle one of these for a while. And my buddy Mike came through on this one, and uh, loaned me this little Rayot wave uh, for a little while, and it's a beautiful thing. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the size comparison. Spyderco Delica, right here, Rayot Wave, uh, Shiragar of Neon. I'm going to be comparing these two a lot during the course of the review here. Um, let's go with the Ontario Rat number two, which is in the same size class, although a little bit smaller. And um, what the heck, a uh, Spyderco Dragonfly in G10. There we go. Let's go on ahead and uh, jump into the good, the bad, and the ugly of this uh, Rayot Wave. So, on the good side, first and foremost in my mind is the action on this knife. Um, it closes very, very smoothly. Smoother than, frankly, any other production knife I can think of offhand. Um, it beats the ZT452CF. It's it's really absurdly smooth. Um, it's not quite in Shirogorov Neon, a Grimsmo Norseman territory, but that's okay. This is a knife that's, um, you know, about half the price of both of those. So, you know, you can't argue with that. Um, on the deployment side, the detent is a little bit light, but it does the trick all the time. This flips in any position reliably. There's never been a time where I've misflipped it or anything like that. So the detent is fine, uh, and that's good. And it's also running on bearings, but they're captive bearings. So there's a little ring in there, and that just means that basically if you take the guy apart, you're not going to have bearings going everywhere, which itself is a good thing. Um, I do like the handle on this guy in that it's uh, very decent ergonomically. Um, it's not perfect. There's a little bit of a hot spot associated with the clip down here, but I, I like it a lot. It's nice. Uh, one little nice touch is that the inlays are internally screwed. The screw heads for the inlays are on the inside and pokes up through here. So I like that. Um, another thing that I did like is kind of a, it's a bit of a belt and suspenders sort of redundant thing, but they put in a Nova Travel Stop in the lock bar insert. There is a lock bar insert here, by the way. Um, but they also did the um, the inlays here. So both of those things are going to serve to keep the lock bar from going too far in that direction. Kind of a nice thing. They used an actual backspacer here rather than just a standoff, which lends a little bit more stiffness and, frankly, air of giving a damn to it, which is nice. This has got a nice milled clip here, and it is meant to fit this knife only. And it's, it's good. Um, it's not too tight. It's not too loose. It's pretty easily adjustable. In fact, I adjust it in the um, disassembly video here. Um, the fit and finish on this guy is good. Um, it's not perfect. There are a couple of little tiny, tiny details. But honestly, if I were anybody other than the Nick Shabazz, I wouldn't be complaining about the fit and finish at all here. So um, fit and finish is very good. No complaints whatsoever. Rayot does a good job there. Um, Let's see here. It is a very lightweight knife uh, for the size here because there's a lot of internal milling here to save weight. The titanium looks pretty thick, but practically speaking, it's it's milled out. And so you can get away with only 3.6 ounces out of this guy. And that's not so bad considering, you know, your Delica's coming in at 2.2 and there's a whole lot more metal here. So I, I got to give them credit for that. That internal milling does work wonders and makes for a very, ah, a very compellingly carryable sort of package. Then finally, uh, the blade on this guy is really nice. Um, I, that's a joy for me particularly here um, in that it has a full flat grind on the blade, which makes it a very, very good slicer. Um, it does have a sharpening choil and it's, it's well done, which is nice. The steel here is M390, which is rapidly becoming my favorite steel of all. Very good. And honestly, it's just not so long as a blade. There are so many blades on modern knives that are just absurd, and this is this is nice. This is at a good size to carry. And so this knife is a very good utility cutter. This is a good pocket knife for actually cutting things, and that's, that's underrated these days. Um, and so I appreciate that very much, that this is a good knife for cutting. But okay, let's wrap up the good here. Um, like I said, it's got a great action, got a great handle. The actual backspacer, 
effect is nice, as is the milled clip. Fit and finish is very good. Let's just be real here. Um, ergonomics are good. It is very, very lightweight because of all the internal milling. Hopefully you can see that. At least you can see it in the disassembly video. And then the blade on this guy makes this a very, very good actual functional cutting tool. And I appreciate the heck out of that. Let's jump into the bat. So on the bad side, first a couple of nitpicks. Um, some people absolutely hate the fact that this has an exposed blade tang. Doesn't bother me, but for those people, that's going to be a deal breaker. Um, uh, then a couple of other Nick Shabazz style nitpicks. It's a $375 knife. Um, none of these things are major issues, but I'd like to see them done better. Um, I'm not a big fan of the fact that the clip doesn't quite match here. The angle on the clip is slightly different than the angle on the handle, and there are some gaps in there. Just it, that doesn't really bring me joy. I, I would have liked the slightly better fit going on there. Um, also, the lock bar insert screw is a little bit less than thrilling. Um, it is fairly straightforward to, grill, uh, to drill in a uh, lock bar insert from the other side so that it is secured, but not visibly so. Uh, for instance, in the Greensmo Norseman here, your lock bar stabilizer just screws into the lock bar itself. Uh, doesn't do it for me there. Um, maybe that was a design constraint here. Who knows? But uh, it just, it's a little ugly for me. Um, then some actual issues here. Um, the blade is a little bit thicker than I'd like to see it. Um, you can see here this is not an uh, uh, this is not a uh, trivially thick blade here. Um, the Shirogorov Neon has a thinner blade. Uh, the 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 Rat 2 has a thinner blade. This is a thickish blade, and so I would have preferred a slightly thinner blade on this guy. Uh, just makes it a better functional cutting tool, and that always makes it nice in my mind. Um, the price on this guy is very high. It's 375 bucks, uh, and that's for a, a knife made in China. That said, I think it earns the price, but it is still a lot of money. I mean, 375 bucks on a pocket knife is nothing to scoff at. You gotta be a little bit crazy to go there on that high end, and I'm saying that as somebody who is absolutely batshit insane. Um, and so that's a, that's a high price here, and that is something that's bad. Although, like I said, I think they earn it, so it's not ugly. Um, finally, something that is right on the verge of ugly are these damned inlays. Um, they just drive me nuts, and they're the reason I didn't buy one of these pre-order the moment I saw it. Because, honestly, like I said, they drive me crazy. They're a little bit underdone uh, to start with. You can see that what they just did here is zip, 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 zip with the end mill, and that's that's pretty much it. It's not that interestingly machined, and then they got a little bit of anodization in there, but and the anodization honestly takes a lot away from it. If this was just gray, I'd be much more interested, or silver, that is. Um, but so it's a little bit underdone, and especially given what we've seen that Rayot can do, like on the Todd Begg Steelcraft Bodegas, this just feels badly underdone and a little bit on the lazy side. I also wish that they had skipped the exterior screw holes, that they had just screwed directly into the inlay and left the top smooth. Um, I feel like that would have made them a lot more interesting. Um, right now, the screw holes kind of break it up in a, a way that's, I don't know, it's better than if they had the screw tops on there, but I would have preferred a hidden screw altogether there. Um, and then also, this pattern is particularly unpleasant under the clip, because think about it, your, your pants or whatever fabric you're putting these over will have to slide between the clip and then this textured checkered pattern. Makes it just a little harder to get into the pants overall. And so, like I said, these inlays to me are just bad. And they're the thing I like absolutely least about this knife. Um, I really wish that they had done something else there. Uh, even just making the whole knife this kind of a stonewash finish. Uh, oh man, that would have been a lot nicer in my mind. But they did these inlays and that's kind of a shame. Whatever. Um, so that's your bad. On the ugly side, there's really only one thing, uh, and that's the lanyard hole here. It's vestigial. It's tacked on. It's just like, oh, crap, guys. We forgot to do a lanyard hole. Okay, that's okay. We'll just stick it into the backspacer. And you end up with this thing that doesn't really match anything else and is just kind of hanging out back there. And uh, this is why the tyranny of the lanyard needs to end. I, I know that a lot of people love the lanyards, but when knife makers just tack on a lanyard hole because, oh, I guess some guys like them, it drives me a little batty because it, you end up with these hackneyed sort of things. So if this was my knife, I'd be at this with a Dremel day one to knock that little lanyard vestigial nastiness off of there. Um, but that's, that's just a personal taste thing if you like a lanyard. And even if you do like a lanyard, this seems awfully thin. 
Um, but anyways, to me, that's ugly. May not be as much to you, but in the grand scheme of ugly for a pocket knife, it's not that bad whatsoever. So what's the final verdict here? So final conclusions, this is a really solid knife, and I'm, I'm happy to call it a gem. Um, it, it's got some room for improvement, though. Uh, for instance, the detent could definitely be a little bit stronger. The lanyard hole could definitely be removed. And I do long for a version of this with better inlays, whether that was just polished titanium here, whether it was just the handle as one material or marbled carbon fiber. There are so many things they could have done that would have been better than this. And so the moment they start dropping versions with better inlays, this will get a lot more tempting. But the thing is, even with those little issues in it, this knife does so many things really right. They've made a small everyday carry folder with really great materials, titanium and M390, with a really great action, um, really rivaling anything in the production world, and construction that's just very, very solid and good. And it's got a lot of the very best aspects of Yashirogorov Neon, but at a much, much lower price, which is kind of nice. I'm going to do an explicit comparison video between these two knives to talk about the differences there. Um, but it's really, really compelling. And honestly, even for the price, which is high, this is a really nice option. In that $375 range and end up, a lot of what you end up in are your very large sort of tactical folders. That, And this is a nice, subtle, everyday carry pocket knife. And it's done well, and it's, I mean, I like it a lot. And so it's a gem. It may not be a flawless gem, but it is very, very, very solid. And I do recommend it if you're looking for some kind of a small folding knife in this price range. Um, so if you want something that's small and smooth and a very effective functional cutting tool, and that's important, but you don't want to spend like Shibagorov Ni on money, then you probably want to check this guy out. Uh, and so... There you go. I hope you uh, found this interesting, that my review was creative enough for you. No, I know it's not pronounced that way, but I had to try, right? And that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. It's time for me to wave goodbye. Okay, I'm leaving, I swear.